Hello and welcome to your February Investor Update. I'm Pacom Breton, Head of Portfolio Management at Nutmeg, and I'm here to give you an overview on market and portfolio performance for January, including a discussion around the Bank of England latest interest rate rise and a view on China. Well, absolutely. Investors will be pleased to hear that January 2023 was a very strong month for equity markets across all regions. Um, global equities were up 4% to 7% for the month, uh, depending on whether you measure it in pound sterling or uh, on local currency basis. Europe was the best performing region uh, as companies there benefited from lower energy and gas prices due to very mild weather conditions. And last year, the impact of the war in Ukraine and the energy crisis made the recession in Europe seem almost inevitable. However, the risk of recession has now receded, lifting optimism and giving local equities uh, a real boost. Emerging markets also performed very positively. We saw Chinese equities rose 10% over the course of the month, with South Korean and Taiwanese markets enjoying similar gains. Only India performed negatively, as governance issues in one of the country's largest companies, the Adani Group, um, impacted the market. In the UK, the FTSE 100 was up by more than 4%, and it's adding to the gains it made in, uh, in 2022. If we look within fixed income, corporate and government bonds also had a largely positive month. Energy prices and the US dollar were actually the only major detractors to this overall buoyant start of the year for investors. Well, it's an interesting point. Um, on the one hand, it seems pretty clear that there is a general improvement in sentiment after a record level of bearishness at the end of last year among institutional investors and businesses alike. Um, lower gas prices in Europe have helped uh, overall. Inflation is starting to ease, especially in the US, reinforcing the belief that price rises have peaked which means central banks will start to have more flexibility in pausing their rate increase cycle. But not everything is, is positive though, and uh, the ongoing earnings season has been relatively disappointing so far, with US company earnings overall 5% less than a year ago, according to the latest results, which is a sign of stagnation. And for markets to remain elevated, corporate earnings will need to be supportive, which isn't really the case uh, so far this year. We saw last year that uh, the anticipated impact of a rate increase by central banks uh, was a major cause of negative equity market returns. Um, and so far this year, market optimism is centered around the expectation that central banks will stop increasing rates um, as inflation slows. While uh, inflation seems to have peaked, the jury is still out on whether strong labor markets and loser financial conditions could keep inflation higher for longer and reversing the optimism around the future action of central banks. So overall, this leaves room for cautiousness and uh, we think the portfolios are, are, are correctly positioned on that front. But for now, we are of course uh, happy to have seen uh, such a, a strong start uh, of the year. Well, yes, actually, because the lifting of the COVID restrictions in China in late 2022 was uh, was radical and uh, resulted in a, in a quick and strong rise in Chinese equities and, and Asian emerging markets as a whole. Um, and at the same time, restrictive policies against some of the large Chinese tech stocks were lifted, and it's helping China uh, to outperform developed equity markets over the last two to three months. But looking beyond this uh, recovery rally, uh, we think that the Chinese economy will continue to face some headwinds and not everything will go back to normal uh, straight away. So we would expect the price of some commodities like coal, copper and oil uh, to rise as China reopens. And they are not spiking yet. And perhaps as China is less connected to the rest of the world uh, at the moment than it was uh, before COVID. But this is really one area where we will monitor it closely. Well, the, the data is very mixed. Um, the Bank of England has lifted its growth forecast for the UK, and it now thinks the economy will contract by just minus 0.5%, rather than minus 1.5% as it envisaged in November. 
While this would mean the UK still enters a recession, the bank thinks it will be much shallower and shorter than what was previously expected. And the positive impact of declining gas prices is one factor making the bank more optimistic. But on the other side, um, an IMF projection uh, released earlier in the month um, gave a slightly more pessimistic view on the outlook for the UK. It downgraded the forecast it had made in October and uh, while upgrading its outlook for the US, France and Germany. So it thinks the UK will be the only economy to have a recession among the large uh, and developed countries in 2023. So the fact that institutions have such different outlooks and keep having to revise them highlights the complicated nature of the UK economy. And we think that while some headwinds remain and actually a drop in energy prices, the potential for rates to stop increasing earlier than initially anticipated and, a relate, and an extremely robust job market are actually reasons to become more cautiously optimistic on the domestic economy. Well, yes, the market environment has been supportive so far this year, as we've already discussed, both bonds and equities performed well in January. And this means that uh, the nutmeg portfolios enjoyed gains over the course of the months. So you, rem you may remember that uh, in December, we made some changes to the portfolios. Um, we adjusted our exposure to equity and bonds to help balance risk in the current macroeconomic environment. And we're pleased to see some of these changes are paying off. Um, we increased our exposure to emerging markets, for example, and uh, which have had a good start uh, to the year. So, of course, uh, we, think the, uh, we think about the asset allocation of our portfolios with uh, the long term in mind. Um, and the investment team and I are reviewing how we can really best uh, deploy the cash uh, waiting within the portfolios over the coming months um, to, to take advantage of any opportunities. And we'll be sure to, to update you uh, when we do this. We will continue to keep you updated via regular blogs, the monthly investor update, as well as the mid-month view from the investment desk videos. So if you have any questions or suggestions for a topic you'd like us to discuss in next month's investor update, you can contact us via social media, email, or in the comments section below this video. Thanks for watching.